I'm Cheryl and welcome to the Sewing Room channel. It's weekly question and answer time. But I just want to remind you, a little quick reminder, to please follow me on Instagram at the Sewing Room channel and don't forget to check out my Facebook page. If you have a question, please leave it below in the comment section. I love reading all of those questions that you give me. And I also love the, just the little general comments. So please keep all that stuff coming. I, well, I really enjoy it. Okay, now let's get started on answering your questions. Sherry had a great question. She wanted to know when she's making a slip cover for a pillow, how much fabric should overlap. And I just also wanted to let you know, I love slip covers. I make them for all of my pillows at home because I can wash them and I can change them seasonally, put Christmas covers over them. So it's a great idea. So Sherry, to answer your question, I'm gonna refer you to my 20 minute pillow video. It will explain how to measure your pillow and how to calculate how much fabric overlaps in the back. It's a very easy video to follow along with and the link for this will be down below your YouTube screen in the description box. Ethel was running into a challenge when making a star quilt block. So here's an example of one of many different types of star blocks. The points can be challenging. It was for me when I was first working with them. So we're going to take a closer look at a half square triangle so I can explain how easy it can be to lose those points. Here is a basket uh, quilt block and it's made up of a lot of half square triangles. And most of your star blocks are made up of half square triangles. When you're piecing them together, so I'm going to focus up in here, you'll notice that I have a quarter inch between this point to the raw edge. Before you piece it into any kind of border or attach this section to another piece in your quilt, you need to make sure you have this much seam allowance in there, one quarter inch. If you've cut this off and then you try to attach this into your next section of your quilt block, your block is going to stop right here and you're going to lose all of your points. So again, keep squaring up your blocks, making sure they finish at the correct size and that you've got one quarter inch of space before you stitch it into your next section of your quilt. Many of you had questions about the cat quilt block. You wanted to know if I had a tutorial on it, and yes I do. It's just for the block itself, but as you can see, you can piece this block into a pillow or make a large quilt and make every cat quilt block a different color cat. And you can also put it into tote bags. So as you can see, you can use it in just about any project that you like. And I will have all the links below your YouTube screen. And you might also be interested in this Scotty Dog quilt block. It's a nice companion to the cat quilt block. In fact, my dog here is named Scotty. Scotty, he's very affectionate. And I have a nice story to tell you about how he got his name. My husband Manny is a huge Star Trek fan. I mean, that's all he ever talks about. Star Trek and Captain Kirk and, and there's an engineer on that show that his name is Scotty. And my husband was an engineer. And also, the name of the spaceship was Enterprise and Scotty here was born in a city called Enterprise. So he's the best friends with my husband Manny. So also check out the tutorial for the Scotty Dog tutorial. <laughs> Vicki had a question about making a quilt. She wanted to use fabrics from her children's clothing and incorporate new fabrics 
in that and she wanted to know how that would work. And yes, you can do that, but you just want to make sure your fabrics are of similar type. In other words, don't mix cotton and polyester or rayon. You want to make sure they're the same because each type of fabric reacts differently. Some stretch, some do not. So if you want your quilt to lay really flat, just make they're the same fiber content. Also, while we're on the subject of quilts, Gloria wants to make a quilt for her son for Christmas. She wants to use 10 inch squares and she wants to know if I have an easy pattern. And yes, I do. In fact, let's take a look at that quilt right now. Vicki and Gloria, here is the suggested quilt pattern that I recommend you use. You can make your squares any size. These are seven and a half inch squares, but if you want to do 10 inch squares, I would maybe do three 10 inch squares apart and as long as you want it to be. And then just add this simple border all the way around. So it's a great beginner's big block quilt. Carol had a question about paper piecing. And an interesting story is I actually met Carol at the Phoenix Quilt and Craft Show. She recognized me from my YouTube channel and she was really sweet and nice and so excited. She had a special request. So this moment is for you, Carol. Thumbs, Thumbs up, Carol. Carol. And now back to your question, Carol. You wanted to know if I had any videos on paper piecing, and yes I do. I have three of them as a matter of fact. And in case some of you don't know what paper piecing is, it's basically stitch by number. And as long as you can count one through two, three, four, five, you're gonna be able to do paper piecing. So Carol, go to below the YouTube screen in the description box and there will be a playlist link you can click on to watch my videos on paper piecing. Thanks for watching and keep those questions coming. I'll see you next time and happy sewing. If you like this video, click on thumbs up and click on share to share this video with your friends. And if you haven't subscribed yet, click on that red subscribe button so you can receive email notifications about my latest video. So click on the bell and enter your email address. If you haven't received those email notifications, go to your cell phone or iPad click on settings and turn notifications on. This is Manny. So glad you came to my sewing room. See you next time. Bye-bye.